So the question I get asked more than anything is, how much is my sports card worth? What is the value of my sports card? And you know what they say, give a man a fish, you can feed him for a day. Teach a man how to fish, you can feed him for life. So today that's exactly what I'm gonna try to do. I'm gonna first start off, and for you guys who are beginners, maybe new to the sports card hobby, or just returning, I'm gonna show you the basics, how to, where to start, you have no idea how to find the value of your sports cards at all. I'm gonna help you out with that. And then also towards the end, I'm gonna teach some more advanced techniques, if you will, for you guys who maybe know how to check eBay sold listings, but you're having a hard time with the comp of a particular card, I'm gonna to try to help you guys out with that as well. So what you wanna do is go to ebay.com and type in the name of your card. So this is a Luka Doncic Revolution Supernova, and it is from 2021, so you wanna put the year in there as well. And you can see they have some cards here. Uh, these are just the cards that are for sale though, right? You know, just because someone is asking $15 for the card doesn't mean it's actually worth $15. Usually there's a reason it hasn't sold yet. What you're gonna wanna do is scroll down here on the left side, the left side of the page on eBay, all the way down and click on sold items. And that's gonna give you all the items that have actually sold and been paid for. So that, that gives you a good idea of at least what people have been willing to pay in the past. Uh, if you see at the top, this one is actually like a fractal, so it's a, it's a dip, it's not exactly our card, so it's not worth quite $20. Um, you can see here $9.99, see these up here, $5.50. So that gives us a pretty good idea of seeing, we can just look at these two right here. It's not from that long ago either, right? Look at it, it's April 12th and April 10th. Usually somewhere in between, average amount roughly, just to give you an idea. It's about a $7.50 card, so... This card right here, boom, in about 30 seconds, we found out a good value of it. But now let's try to get into slightly tougher scenarios and we'll increase in difficulty as we go. So the first one that's pretty easy to do is, you see these two right here where it says best offer accepted and it has 750 crossed out and 999 crossed out. Basically what that means is someone listed it for basically $10 and then someone offered something below that and that offer was accepted. So let's say we only had these two. How are we supposed to know what it's actually worth? What you're gonna to wanna to do is go up here and go to a website called 130point.com. Um, I think this one took me straight to the eBay sales just because I use it a lot, but I'm sure you guys are smart enough, you can find it on their website on 130point. And once again, you're gonna type in the card you wanna see. In our case, it was that Luke Godantra Supernova revolution from 2021 and boom look at right here it's actually going to show us what that exact offer was so in this case it was three dollars and eight dollars so yeah you know around that seven dollar and fifty cent range that we're guessing for the value of this card um, obviously for this one since there's a lot of sales of it it's not as helpful but you're going to run into a lot of situations where the only completed sale you can find is one best offer and it's really useful for you to be able to see what that offer actually was. But even you guys who have been in the hobby for a while, I get questions all the time asking about the values of your cards because the comps are kind of hard to find. So not that I'm any type of expert, but I'm gonna do my best to help you guys out as well. So here's a card I was comping today. Kevin De Bruyne, Topps Chrome 2017 Purple. A little bit more rare. There's only 250 in the world, so this card doesn't sell every day like that Luka Doncic we were looking at earlier. And if you go to eBay right here, Kevin De Bruyne, Topps Chrome 2017 Purple, um, and we're already on the completed sold listings, boom, right here. This is the only comp there is. $599 best offer accepted for a PSA 10. But I don't have a PSA 10. I have a raw card, so how is that gonna help me at all? Well, I'll tell you, there's a, there's a couple ways we can do it. So the first thing we're gonna do is go back to 130 point and let's see what this card actually sold for this PSA 10. Kevin De Bruyne Topps Chrome 2017 purple. There's one on bids right now but just for the sake of it let's let's ignore it. Oh wow so see this is why it's really good to check. I would have thought it would would be more like maybe $450 but it was $300 so quite a it was like half off the 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 listing price. So don't just assume it's it's near there. $300 a PSA 10 sold for. So what is this raw one worth? It's not graded, it's obviously not a PSA 10. Can I still find the value of this if all I have is a PSA 10 comp? Yeah, I would say you would, or at least you can get a pretty good idea of it. 
And for me, the best way to do that is usually by using ratios. You can have raw PSA 9 and PSA 10. If you, it's almost like a, in a, a math equation like algebra. If you have any one of those values, usually you can get a pretty good idea of what the other one is worth. So for a PSA 10 is usually the most expensive. You have that at the top of the, the pyramid. Right now we have that one at $300. We know this PSA 10 of this Kevin De Bruyne is worth $300. For a PSA 9, for an ultra modern card, usually it's about one third of the value. Maybe one fourth, but I think one third is probably good for this one. So I would imagine a PSA 9 of this card would be worth around $100. Now for a raw to PSA 9, it can get really tricky because for certain things, once again, like vintage cards, uh, thicker cards, rarer cards, there can a lot of times be a, be a large premium. So like a PSA 9 would be worth a ton more than a card that's raw, like, like this, just sitting. But for cards that are plentiful, for cards that you see a lot of, for, for most cards, like I said, that we're gonna be dealing with, there usually isn't too much of an increase in value for a PSA 9. Usually it's slight, like 10, 20% of raw value. So a card like this, I would probably say is worth anywhere from 60 to $75 raw in this condition right here. Now, once again, there's exceptions to everything. That's not, you can show me a million examples where those ratios don't hold up, but that'll just give you guys a guide, give you some sort of idea when you can't find the specific comp of the condition or the grade that your card is in. And you guys can use that in the inverse as well, right? Let's say we only had the raw comp, uh, we saw that this sold for $60 and we had a PSA 10 and we were trying to figure out, okay, what would a PSA 10 maybe be worth? You find out what a PSA 9 would probably be worth. In this case, we'd imagine if this sold for 60, maybe about $100. Multiply that by three, boom, $300. And you'll, you would have a good idea of what your card would be worth if you're the only one with a PSA 10. But all right, last up, let's try an even harder one. What if there is absolutely no comps? I get this question all the time. There is no comps at all of my card. How do I find the value? How could I possibly? It's impossible, Troy. I can't do it. I'll show you how. So Neymar Topps Chrome 2017 Green from the same set, but different player I was looking at earlier today. Saw it for sale on Facebook. I go to sold. There's nothing there. There's nothing there at all. Nothing there at all. This is uh, from 2021, so that's not the card I'm looking for. Um, First, what I would do is I'd go and see, is there any up for sale at all? There's none up for sale at all. What am I supposed to do? I'm lost, I can't do it. No, you know what? You can do it. So let's let's keep on keeping on. We're gonna find the value of this card. The first way I would, so if, if neither of those work, I would probably use a website like Cardliner. They have a really great tool for this. Um, I have the pro version. We, we're gonna have a link in the description if you wanna check that out. I think it's relatively affordable. Um, you might even be able to do this for free. I know you do have some access to card ladder, even if it's free, but a really helpful tool they have is the, is the sales history right here. So if I type in, so we didn't find anything on eBay, right? Cause it only has results for the last three months, I believe, but boom, look at this. If you go to sales history on card ladder, they have a ton of results and it's not just eBay as well. I don't know if we can see an example on here. We can't, but they have my slabs, PWCC, other other results and it goes back further so boom look at 64 dollars 61 140 uh, we had a psa 10 so it sell for 393 obviously these are from a while ago so you kind of have to figure out has it gone up or down in value but you know it seems like it's probably around a, a 60 to 75 dollar card in raw condition and would you look at that the ratios at least for this card pretty much hold true. It's closer to that times four that I was saying rather than times three, but raw is $60. Uh, PSA nine is probably around a hundred and boom, a PSA 10 sold for 393. So usually th those can kind of help you guess the other things. But once again, let's say you have no access to card ladder at all. You have no interest. I think it's a great tool. So definitely check this out. Being able to see it from all the auction sites and everything makes a huge difference. But let's say you don't have access to that. Let's try something different. I would say, I would call this cross-checking comps. And I think it's it's really, really helpful. So if we go to Topps Chrome 2017 green, not Neymar, we couldn't find any Neymar. Let's go, uh, I wanna keep it with soccer because it's a soccer set. And we are gonna go to sold items. Let's see if there's anything. Okay, so we can see a Cavani right here. So this is like something I would do, right? 
if the Gavani sold for 45 bucks, uh, you guys may not know a ton about soccer, but he's not as good of a player as Neymar. So in basketball, you, you're looking at LaMelo Ball and you see a, a Patrick Williams sold. You know, okay, he's probably above at least this sale. So I have a good idea he's above that. He's better than all these guys we're seeing right here. So $19. So I'm like, okay, I know my card is most likely worth more than at least $45. And I'm not sure if we can find... Uh, you know, I don't think we're gonna find like a Messi or someone, but you see $34, all these other guys. So you look at other players and it gives you a good idea of what yours might be worth. So these super low end players are about $2. These mid tier players are selling for around $35. You know, once again, I, I, I'm, I'm a little biased because I've already seen it, but I'd be like, okay, my Neymar has got to be worth at least 60 to $70. So even if there's no comps at all on your card and you don't have card ladder, That'll help you a lot looking at the same set, the same parallel of comparable players or players that are worse, players that are better. That'll give you a range. Maybe that's too much. Maybe that's too complicated for you. Try looking at the different parallels. So, um, yeah, we didn't have any green. We found some we found some purple refractors here. So it's the same set. This one is slightly less rare. It's to 250. As you can see here, we only have an SGC 10 and a uh, PSA 10 comp, but just for the sake of it, let's imagine that we saw a purple sold on here for, if you do the math, let's call it probably about 50 bucks is what it would sell for. You can say, okay, if that sold for 50, our green is probably worth around a little bit. It has to be worth a little bit more. It's more rare. And once again, it gets us to that 60, $75 number that, that interestingly enough is actually the right answer. That's that's the value we saw here that it sold for in raw condition a couple months ago. So I kind of went on there, but hopefully that was helpful to not only you beginners, but also you guys who have been in the hobby for a little bit to find the value of cards. Um, if you have any more questions, I'd be happy to ask. Make sure to like and subscribe and we're gonna keep the videos coming. Thanks again.